Broken Games HD is now sponsored by Blue Microphones. Whether you're an experienced content creator or just starting out, Blue Microphones has affordable and quality audio equipment to optimize your setup. Visit bluemic.com. All right, what's going on, everybody? So this is the final boss in the Bloodborne, the Old Hunters DLC, Lawrence the First Vicar. Uh, now, Lawrence the First Vicar is a variation of the first, very first boss you play in the vanilla version of Bloodborne, the Cleric Beast. Uh, he's a variation, he's stronger, has a different type of move set, and he has a flame uh, or fire element to him. So, you know, that's you're fighting on two fronts, you know, the strong physical attacks and also the additional fire damage. So I had to do different things to prepare for him, change up my gear, uh, and, you know, change up my, uh, not blood gems, but the other three attributes uh, you can choose at the altar. So initially I had went into this fight, uh, you know, just using 20 blood vials, but I had to go to the altar and uh, use the gem so I can carry four additional blood vials. I had to do it. This is the first boss fight I ever had to, you know, actually submit to using additional blood vials. Um, I also had to put on, uh, put in the gym, um, I'm probably using the wrong terminology, but most of you know, know what I'm talking about. I also had to put in uh, the gym to withstand, uh, to increase my fire damage, and like I said, change in my armor. But man, I gotta tell you, this boss fight took me forever to beat. I must have died 45 plus times, right? In the Old Hunters DLC, um, Ludwig and Lawrence are easily the two hardest bosses the other three honestly piece of cake I died with the other three I died maybe three maybe four times Ludwig I had to die at least 30 times Lawrence had to die at least 40 times and it was so frustrating I, I started yesterday morning and you know pretty much was playing for hours couldn't beat him uh, the podcast you know weapon wheel podcast came around of course and and I, you know, so I had to stop. So after that, last night, I went right back to it, said I, I can't go to bed with a loss. I can't go to bed with a loss, right? I played for a few more hours, went to bed with that loss. I had no choice. Got back up early this morning, got right back on it, took a whole bunch of other losses, and then I had to go out. I said to myself, listen. See, when I say this stuff to myself and I mean it, it, it falls, it comes through. It comes through, right? I said, I cannot leave this house because I got to leave in like 10 minutes. This is the I said this is the last time I have because I gotta leave. I'm gonna beat this boss right now, and it ended up happening. But this was it. See when when I put up these videos because I don't have you know I don't have the time to edit in 40 40 deaths for you to see the progress and how difficult these bosses can be. So somebody who's not who's not actually playing Bloodborne who haven't actually played these bosses. To you, it doesn't look like it's that difficult. This was extremely difficult. This was the product of dying a lot and learning. See, that's what Bloodborne is, and that's what the Souls games are. Dying isn't necessarily a bad thing, as long as you learn from the deaths, right? If you learn from every single death, you're just slowly chipping away at the ways you can die. You're slowly chipping at the way, away at the possible ways the bosses can kill you because you're learning in every scenario, in 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 every instance. You're learning. Okay, what can what do I do in this instance? What do I do here? You're like researching uh, and and analyzing every piece of its move set. You know, you're you're analyzing when to dodge. Uh, you know the, the the boss's behavior, their move sets, and their tendencies and when you just die so much and keep coming back and back, you just start to learn it like the back of your hand, right? And that, it kind of reminds me of that quote, I believe, who was it, Thomas Edison said, uh, regarding when he was creating the light bulb. He said he never failed at creating the light bulb. He just learned like a hundred ways how not to create a light bulb. And that's what Bloodborne is. Every death is just you learning how not to beat the boss. And it, it becomes even more difficult when you get to the second phase because you know all these bloodborne bosses have like a second phase and this is one of the most it was tricky it was a very tricky second phase because uh you know like i said he has a, and i don't know that was so lucky i didn't die right there that was god helping me out because he's like listen you've been through a lot you've been sticking with it that was god that allowed me to live right there 
His second phase is difficult because he actually takes up more real estate when he's crawling. So before, it wasn't so hard. It was actually easier to get away from him in the first phase. Now, he's crawling, and he leaves a lava trail behind him. And you, if you walk in a lava trail, you obviously get hit. So you have this small little window and small little trail uh, that you can actually attack him. He's doing this. If he does a flamethrower attack, you have to stand. But Wow, I can't believe I didn't die. I thought I was dead right there. I swear to God, I thought I was dead. I had put down the controller for a second. So you have to dodge the lava and also watch out for his physical attacks and also the flamethrower attack so it leaves this very small window and very small piece of real estate where you can actually stand and that's what's so difficult about it right it's just so many different ways you can die I mean there's even moves where he can kill you practically damn near full life with one or two hits definitely he, he has those move sets and those are the ones you definitely you need to learn how to avoid or just hope he doesn't do them too often but that's why I just love the DNA and the formula of this game because it's not like many others where dying is a requirement for you to learn like when you a lot of people ask me you know who are newcomers to this uh, Bloodborne or just the souls like you know what what advice should do I you know what advice do I have for them honestly you gotta look at every death as a positive thing that, that's what you gotta do you're gonna get frustrated you're gonna get pissed off but you have to look at every death as a positive thing as it's just one more death leading you to victory and this is a very it's not every boss is is as intricate as others there's certain some easy ones that are like pretty uh, you know pretty they're not multi-dimensional this was definitely a multi-dimensional boss and you know this was a very a boss that you had to be very strategic with you had to like study this boss Lawrence was one I definitely had to study and study and study until I I knew every movement by the sound he makes by um, by the startup of the move uh, you know just by every little nuance of his movement I knew what he was gonna do that's what this boss fight pushed me to like knowing this boss like the back of my hand because what I did I trust me it was not easy he was definitely I, I would definitely rank that in the top five hardest bloodborne bosses including the ones in the original game easily top five possibly top three easily I might make a video of my top five maybe top ten uh, hardest bloodborne bosses you know in my opinion I don't know if I'm gonna do it but I'm definitely interested in doing it so I might do it so that was the last boss happy I beat I beat him fully have completed bloodborne all the bosses dominated it, it makes you feel like a boss you feel great it's it's overcoming overwhelming challenges and some bosses are like there's some bosses that are cheap right there's some bosses that aren't hard they're just cheap and like really cheesy right lawrence wasn't actually a cheap boss lawrence was le a legit hard boss in my opinion but thank y'all for watching i'm out of here peace y'all might have heard my voice in the background because it was recording what i was saying also but peace i'm out of here